All right, we're going to go ahead and let Junior Church head on downstairs. Joshua chapter number 8. Joshua chapter number 8. Pardon? Joshua 8. Joshua 8. Anybody that wants to uh, stay for... Uh, um, they're having hot dogs and macaroni and cheese, I think, the, uh, the, uh, for the kids after the service. So I think they're going to have plenty of hot dogs and stuff. So if anybody wants to stick around uh, to have that, you're welcome to. Uh, just venture on down after church down there, all right, uh, and help yourself. Uh, I think there's plenty, plenty, should be plenty of hot dogs and stuff down there and things. So uh, if you want to do that, you're more than welcome. Uh, Joshua chapter number 8. We're going to look at verses 1 through 3 and then for, uh, go skip to verse 24. Read verses uh, 24 through 30. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise and go to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. Thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king, only the spoil thereof, the cattle thereof, shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves, lay thee in ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose out 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. So here's the second time that they're going to, into Ai. All right. Um, and then go on down to verse number 24. We see that the, the, the battle in verse number 24. And it came to pass when Israel had made, made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field in the wilderness where they, wherein they chased them. And when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned to Ai and smote it with the edge of the sword. And it was so that all the all that fell that day, both of men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city Israel took for a prey unto themselves, according to the word of the Lord, which he commanded Joshua. Joshua burnt Ai and made it a heap forever, even a desolation of this day. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. As soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city and raise thereon a great heap of stones that remaineth unto this day. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. And that's what I want us to look about here and think about is is having altars or building altars and uh, in, in things in your life. And uh, let's pray. Lord, please help me now, I pray. Bless all those who are able to come. I pray you please give them a special blessing for their obedience today. Lord, meet their needs and provide for them, Lord, I pray. Lord, help me now. Give me the words to say, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the definition of an altar is this. If you were to look it up and things, it is a raised structure or a place on which sacrifices are off offered or incense is burnt uh, in worship, all right? Um, altars were used to uh, offer to, uh, sacrifices. They were used to burn incense. Uh, they were used as memorials. Um, and, and if you look in the Bible, you'll find <laughs> that even times when an altar was used for protection, all right? Uh, so... An altar was in the in in the Bible days was certainly a very sacred place. Um, uh, there were <coughs> um, there were several types of offerings made to God at an altar. So if you just again study it, you'll find that there was a sacrifice of peace offering. Uh, you'll find there was a sacrifice of sin offering. You'll find there was a sacrifice of thanksgiving offering. All these were sacrifices that were made at the altar. Um, the altar was the place where one came to God in prayer. It was a, a special time that one had with God. It, uh, this altar was not something that was just a routine visit. All right? It wasn't something that was a um, uh, you know, thing that it was just a routine thing. All right? This was a special time. It was a special place where you and God meet and have that talk that you desperately need at that time. All right, so the altar was not just something that was just haphazardly put up. It wasn't just something that was just, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, was just uh, something just 
whatever type thing. It was very special. It was a, a special place. It was a special uh, thing to people and, and such. Um, right? Kind of like, uh, you know, we all have special places. All right? For instance, let, let, let me give you an example. Um, when, my, when I proposed to my wife, um, my wife and I, we were sitting in a, in, a car, in the car in my wife's mom and dad's driveway uh, in, 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 uh, when I proposed to my wife, all right? Um, now, I know the spot, the exact spot, pretty much within, within a few feet of where we were parked and where, I, where we were sitting in the car and uh, in things when I proposed to her, all right? Now, to me, that is a special place. That's a special place uh, that uh, very, is a very important event in our life. It was a special place and, and, and such. Now, and that, that place has been, people have parked in that spot uh, over the last 30 some, 32 years, 33 years. People have parked in that spot. They've parked in that spot to many times. They've walked through that spot. They, they've, uh, you know, cars and, and uh, they, you know, and, and, and things. And they don't think anything of it. To them, it's just no spot. To them, it's just something, you know, I'm just going to go. And, but to me, it's a special place. To me, it's a special spot. To me, it's something a very special happened uh, that day when she said yes, uh, when I finally talked her into saying yes that morning, all right, and, and that afternoon. I actually had to talk her into marrying me, believe it or not. Uh, but uh, uh, if you know my wife well, you understand that's just typical of my wife. Uh, but uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's special to me. So an altar that I'm talking about here is, is a special place. It's a special place between you and God. It's a place where, where you and God can meet during special occasions when you need his presence felt more than any other time. It's not just a place where, uh, right? For instance, I, I do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of praying. Uh, I'll do, uh, you know, when I'm walking, I pray while I walk uh, and, and things. Or, or uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, come up here and I'll pray. I'll come up here and I'll sit in the chair when no one's here and I'll, I'll, and I'll pray. Or I'll uh, uh, pray while I'm driving down the road. If, if you see me driving down the road and I don't, I don't wave to you, I'm not being stuck up, I'm probably praying. And, and, and things. All right, I'm still looking, looking at the road uh, and things. But so those are times. Those are just those are prayer times, and those are great times. But that I'm not talking about that kind of a time. I'm not talking about that kind of a, uh, a time. I'm talking about a special time. I'm talking about a time where you and God meet, where you need to get a hold of God, where you really need God to, to give you something because you're in desperate need. You're, you, you need uh, 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 something from him, uh, not, uh, unlike any other time. I'm talking about that kind of a time. I'm uh, not talking about your daily time. I'm talking about a special time, a, a time where uh, you have to get a hold of God. It's not one of these things where God, when you get a minute uh, and thinks, it's, I need God, I need you now, I need, I need answers now, I need, I need your help now, I need your, your presence felt now, I need you now. I'm talking about that kind of time. I'm talking about that kind of an altar uh, and things. And, uh, and, 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 and it could be an altar that you have, uh, you know, in, 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 in a certain place where, where, you know, this is where I've gone, this is where I got a hold of God one day. This is where I got a hold of God. This is where, where me and God, when I had a special need in my life, and I went there, and, 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 and God uh, and me, we had a special fellowship time uh, and, and things. And it becomes a special place. And, and, and by the way, it could be different, different places and things, but, but those special places and things. So, so uh, we all need to have that. We all need to get that because the truth of the matter is, there is going to come a time in your life where you're going to need God just like that. There's going to come a time in your life where, where, where things start falling or, or questions start coming of, of wanting to know God's will. And it's something you're going to need to know. And there's going to have to, you're going to, you're going to wish that you had that altar. You're going to wish that you had that place where you could go, where you know, hey, I got a hold of God there. Uh, that's my special place between with me and God. And, and, and you have that place. Now, that place might not be special to anybody else, but it'll be special to you. Uh, now, what I want to do this morning is I want to give you some examples, some Bible examples 
of times when great men of God built a special altar to God. I'm going to give you these examples because I think they're very important. And, and because these are also times when we too maybe ought to be times where we build this special place and have that special place that we get alone and get with God and have that special time. The first one, of course, is in our text here in, eight, in Joshua 8.30. Here, Joshua built an altar to God after this great victory over Ai. You understand something? This victory was, uh, was a great victory. You got to understand what happened before. You remember what happened before. They they taken the, the the walls of Jericho and they had a great victory at Jericho and uh, and uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, Achan stole the the the, the things from from uh, uh, that were supposed to be given to God and he stole those things and and right after this ver uh, uh, victory they go and, and and they spy out Ai and and some of the men said, hey, you know what? We don't all need to go. I mean, we just, we just defeated a great city of Jericho with the great walls, and we don't all need to go to this place. And so they just sent uh, just a few thousand men to go to this place. And, and uh, you remember, uh, they got beat. They got uh, several, I think 20 or, or 30 or so people were killed of, of, of the children of Israel. Israel and, and they were, they were uh, and the men of Ai uh, uh, had them run in their, in their, in their shoes. So there was a great uh, defeat here at Ai. And then that's when God told Joshua that, hey, uh, you know, get up and realize there's sin in the camp. You've got sin in the camp. So this victory here, Ai here, was, was after that. And, and, and uh, God gave them a great victory after that defeat. And I'm telling you, sometimes, um, you know, uh, in your life, you're going to find that you're going to say, you know what, man, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't deserve it, but God gave me that victory. I didn't deserve that. It wasn't something that, that I did. It wasn't anything in my power. It was only God that got me through that. And it's that time in your life where, you, where uh, you know, you, you need to build that altar. You need to build that place and say, you know what, uh, I'm going to remember this place. I'm going to remember this time. I'm going to remember this time when God gave me that great victory. It's a place to remember. It's a place and time that you build in your heart. You know, I'm not talking about just something specific like a, 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 you know, making a chair or anything. like. I'm talking about in your, in your mind, in your heart, in your life where you say, you know what? I'm going to remember this great victory God gave me. I will remember this. And then if you go back to Genesis chapter number 8, in Genesis chapter number 8, verse number 20. Now after the flood, now Noah gets and uh, leaves the, the, uh, the, uh, they're on land now. In verse number 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord. Here, Noah built an altar at the start of a new beginning. He built an altar at the start of a new beginning. You know, uh, you know when, when you got saved, I remember where I got saved. I remember that. It's a special place for me. I remember that. I remember where I was. I was, I was uh, uh, believe it or not, at the Canton High School. And, uh, and, and, and they were, the Calvary Baptist Church was holding a, a revival service, a, a prophecy conference back in 1980. And I was there, and I went forward in the message, and I remember the person who, uh, uh, who dealt with me. We went back into the cafeteria. We sat down at a table. I could take you to the, the, to the area, to the table, if it's still there. And, and he showed me how I could know for sure I have heaven as my home, and I trusted Christ that day. I can remember that. It's a, why? It was a new beginning in my life. It was something new, something new. And many times, I'm telling you, sometimes in your life, you just got to go back to those times. You go back to the, hey, boy, I can remember. Boy, you can, you, can, you can hit me with this, and you can hit me with that, and you can hit me with that, and you can take away this, and you can take away that. But you know what? There ain't no one going to take away my salvation. And I could go back to that place. And so I'll build you an altar. Go back to these things. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, 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 you know, the new beginnings. Maybe it's marriage. You know, the reason why some marriages fail is because we forget to go back to uh, that wedding day. We forget all about it. 
You know, it's amazing. We spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a photographer, don't we? I mean, we spend all this money for the photographer. And how many times in, in, in all the years you're married do you ever go back where just you and your, your spouse sit down and look at those photos? And remember the day. And that's why marriages get stale. That's why marriages get the way they are. Because we, 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 have, the, we have the ability, we have those things, and, and, and yet we, we, uh, we, we fail to go back to those special places. And remember. I think of, of joining the church. You know, I can remember, um, you know, when, you know, people, that, even here, and, and I've been here, I'll be here almost nine, it'll be nine years in May. I remember people that have come and, and, and you know, they joined the church and, and boy, boy, I just, I can't, I thank God so much for this church and, and, and you know, the, and, and the preaching is so great and the pastor is so great and, and the wife, pastor's wife is so, the people are so great and I am so glad God, God brought me here. Man, this is great. And that, but you look around and they're not here anyway. What happened? They lost that. They quit reliving that time when they first joined. The excitement. The, nothing else has changed. The preaching's the, the, you know, been, been the same. The same, same people, same pastors, same pastors and why. What happened? They let that, that memory go. And they need to get back. Make that an altar. Make that a place where you say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that real in my life. Let me give you another one. Go to Genesis chapter number 22. In verse number nine. And they came to a place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Here Abraham builds an altar at the time of a great sacrifice. The most probably the greatest sacrifice that he would ever make would be his son. You know, sometimes we need to build an altar at a time of great loss. Mm -hmm. The loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, loss of health. We need to build an altar at that time. Because you know what? Those are the times where you really sought, sought God, wasn't it? You know, it's amazing. You know, sometimes when things are going well, we don't think much about God. But boy, when we have a loss, we do, don't we? Boy, when we have a loss of a loved one, we do. But when we have a loss of a job or loss of health or whatever... That's when we go and seek God. And if you haven't done that, you've, you've been, not lived long enough to experience that, uh, you will experience it. You will experience it. And I'm telling you, when you do, you better have a place in, in, in your mind and make a place where you and God can get alone and speak to Him and have that time that you need with Him to get the strength you need to keep on going. Get the strength that you need to live another day. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 33. Give you another one. Genesis chapter number 33. Verse number 15. Genesis 33, 15. And Esau said, Let me now leave thee with some uh, leave thee some of the flock that are with thee. And he said, What meaneth what needeth it? Let me find grace in thy side, the sight of, of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him an alt house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place was Succoth. Uh, and Jacob came to uh, uh, Shalem, the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padanaram and pitched his tent before the city. And he brought, bought a parcel of, of field where he had spread his tent in the hand of the children of Hamar, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money, and erected there an altar and called it Elo He Israel. And here Jacob builds an altar of the time when he got his relationship right with his brother Esau. You know, and sometimes we need to build that altar. You know, we've all we've all done things, and 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 unfortunately, some of us, uh, some people are, are dealing with relationships that have been broken that are still broken. And the truth of the matter is, as Christians, we ought not be that way. We ought to have, not have any relationship that's broken, at least on our part. 
It ought to be something that we as Christians ought to say, you know what? I'm not going to let it break me. I'm not going to let it get me down. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to go on. I am going to. If they don't, so what? I'm going to do it. And we need to be that way. But, but here Jacob says, you know what? I find I've gotten right with my brother. I've gotten right with my brother. Me and my brother are okay again. And it was years, by the way. It took years because Jacob was gone for, for 20 years. But he finally got it right. And he says, I'm going to build me an altar. Remember this time when I got right with that relationship with my brother. And I'm telling you, we need to, we need to do that. Uh, you know, we'd learn to appreciate people more if we did that. We learn to appreciate people more. We have more patience with one another if we did that. If we remember that time. I remember my, my mom and her sister. And I didn't know it growing up. I didn't know it. But my mom and my sister, or her sister, not my mom and my sister, but my mom and her sister uh, didn't speak for like 15 years. And finally, mom said, you know what? I, I finally got to a point where, and us kids didn't know about it. We had no clue. They kept it from the kids, and I'm glad they did. But uh, she finally said, you know what? This is silly. I don't even remember why we're not even speaking. And they got that relationship right. Now, praise the Lord that even during hard times, and they didn't say they didn't have a rocky relationship, didn't have disagreements later, because you're going to have disagreements. But, but mom kept going back saying, you know what? I'm not going to let 15 years go by again without uh, having that relationship with my sister again. And many times we build this, we, we go, something that we could go back to to help us in our relationship and things. Let me give you another one. G Genesis 35. Genesis 35. Verses 1 through 3. And God said unto Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto God. That appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him. Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. And let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. Here uh, Jacob built an altar at a time when he met God. When him and God met together. You know um, and I think sometimes you know people. Uh, you know, there are times, there's no doubt in my mind, there's times in your life where you were sitting in the pew and God spoke to you. You're sitting in the pew and God says, you know what, I need you to do this. You're sitting in the pew and, and God is saying, you know what, I want you, I'm calling you, I want you to teach a Sunday school class or, or I want you to uh, uh, call to preach or I want you to, I want you to uh, uh, do this. Uh, this is what I want you to do in your life. And every one of us that we've been saved long enough under the preaching has had some time when God has spoken to us and we knew that God was leading us to do that very thing. And the reason why many people uh, go back from that is because they don't remember, they don't go back to that time and remember that time when God told them that. You know, the Bible says the calling of God is without what? Repentance. It ain't God that changes his mind. It's we that change our mind. Isn't God that changed it? So if God called you to do whatever it was, whatever God spoke to your heart about during a, a message, during a preaching service, or, or maybe at home talking to God, and God spoke to you in your quiet time and said, Hey, I want you to do this. If you're not doing it anymore, it's because you probably haven't revisited that time and that place. Now it's become cold. Now it's become just something, something that is, is not even thought of much anymore. Let me give you another one. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 27. Deuteronomy chapter number 27. And verse number 6. Here. The people are getting ready to cross over to, to the Jordan. They're getting over to cross over to the promised land. Look at uh, 27 6. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereunto unto the Lord thy God. Here the children of Israel build an altar at the time of their surrender to God. The crossing of, of Jordan represents the surrender of the Christian, the surrendering to God's will. 
Praise life. You know, I was talking to uh, somebody yesterday, and uh, they said, you know, I, I, it's been so and so, so many days, so, such and such days, where, uh, and, and I've not, I have not smoked. And uh, they said, I remember it well, and God, and, and I knew it, and God, I asked God for help, and God gave me the victory over that in my life. And they were rejoicing over it y yesterday. I thank God for that day when he, when he uh, did that. And that's what it's talking about here. You know, you have days in your life where God gave you victory over that, that, that it's sin or, or whatever it was in your life that was, that was, was uh, besetting you, if you please. And you begged God and God gave you that victory. And one of the ways to keep that a victory is to go back and say, thank God that he gave me that victory. Thank God this was the day when God helped me get through that day. Days of great victories. I think we all need to take and think about some of the things in our life. And we all need to go back and build some altars there and have those special places, those special, these special times when we could go back and say, wow, look what God did here. Wow, look what God did here in this day of victory. Look at what God did here in the day that, uh, uh, that he saved me. Look what God did here in the day that he provided. Look what God did here in the day that, that, uh, uh, that, that I needed him the most. And he came down and he got me through that day. Look what God did. We all need to build some of those altars. The day that I came and, 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 and became part of Victory Baptist Church. And how I felt. How I was, uh, how I was so thankful that God brought me here. And you need to build those altars, but then you need to use those. You need to go back to them. You need to revisit them. They're there for a purpose. They're there to go back to. These are times. These are events. These are places for you to go back to, to revisit, to rekindle the flame of how God has blessed you in your life. You see, the place is not as important as the purpose. It's not as important as the purpose. The purpose is to get you to go back and rethink to that time. I'm saying, wow, look what God did for me. And then it should, if we revisit and realize all God has done, it should allow us to walk away rejuvenated for him we should be changed when we walk away should not be it should not walk away the same as when we before we got there we should be changed you know we and i'm going to do a message on the altar here on the altar and coming to the altar because i think i think sometimes we've made too light of it people come and I'm not I'm not don't saying I don't want people to come but you know it, it, I you know we need to be we come to the altar even here during the during the invitation we ought to walk away changed ought to be something that, that it changes us ought to be something that changes if not then then maybe it would maybe you weren't uh, you weren't as committed to what you thought you were but we ought to be changed ought to be something that is special to us Jacob built an altar. Abraham built altars. Noah built altars. All through the Old Testament, you'll find they had altars that they built. The children of Israel built altars. And we, as God's people, need to build altars in our life during these great times as well. Altars where we could go back to and revisit and rejuvenate our life for God. You remember when you married your, your spouse? Remember how excited you were? If you find yourself not as excited about it now, it's probably because you haven't revisited that feeling that you had before. When's the last time you, you, you went back to that? When's the last time you took pictures or, or, and, and revisited together those pictures and things. When's the last time? 
I guarantee you, you do it together and you relive that day together. I guarantee you, you'll have a better appreciation for your spouse than you did before you looked at those photos. Remember that day. But that's what we need in our Christian life. Because we're walking around unappreciative of what God has done in our life. We're walking around at a point in our life where we've had so much and so many things. We're walking around our life and we don't appreciate all that God has done for us. And all the times he's answered a prayer. All the times he's provided. All the times that he's protected. All the times that he's helped us get through this and helped us get through that. We don't appreciate these things because we have failed to go back and remember those days. Build those altars that you could go back to. Build those times in your life where you could revisit and revisit them. And keep that fire for God in your life. Let's pray.